Thanks a lot for coming guys, I think Laurie's just going to do a short introduction and then we'll get the TV section underway. Uh, good morning everybody, uh, welcome to Molyneux. Um, I just want to, before we get into the Q&A section of the press conference, I just want to um, make a couple of statements and points really. Um, obviously the club released a statement on Monday with regards to um, Paul Lambert and, and how he and Wolves had um, agreed to part company. I think it's important that before we continue, I just want to place on record um, in this press conference um, our appreciation and our thanks to Paul uh, and his team and Stuart Taylor for, for all the work that they've done over the last six months um, in, uh, in delivering within that six month period some, some good results and some really sort of high moments for the club. So um, I'd just like to place on record that and also equally some of the, um, some of the other backroom staff that have left us this week um, as a result of the coaching change. Um, some of those guys of which have been with us for, for several, several seasons and seen some real success within the club. So my personal thanks um, to those guys. Um, similarly, I'd just like to convey some thanks to you, the media, for your patience. I can appreciate the last four or five weeks um, have been deeply frustrating, probably. Um, we've felt a degree of that as well. So um, thanks again for your patience. You've been, been very kind with us over the last few weeks. and. Um, uh, as I say, I want to convey my thanks. And really, lastly, um, there's a message to the fans, really, again, in terms of showing and conveying our appreciation. I know this has been a very frustrating time over the last five weeks. We've been communicating very little, as I'm sure you can probably understand why. Um, but there's been a huge amount of patience and support for the club during that process. And, and, and our fans have been as excellent as they always are. Um, and we continue to thank them for that support. Um, as you can see, um, I'll probably preempt two quick questions. One, where's Jeff? And two, where's Kevin? Um, as far as Jeff goes, Jeff's back in China. Um, Jeff was here uh, as recently as last week um, and was very involved, obviously, in the conclusion of um, uh, agreeing to bring Nuno to the club. Um, but he's now back in China and will be back in, in the foreseeable future. Um, and similarly with Kevin, um, as I'm sure you can appreciate, we had and we have a specific recruitment plan that we've had in place for several weeks. Um, the last few weeks has provided a little bit of um, difficulty in taking that plan forward, shall we say, but we now have a completely clear path ahead of us and that recruitment plan is now fully activated and up and running. Um, and Kevin is now working extremely hard on delivering that for the club. Um, the first sign of which was last night when we announced Ryan Bennett joining the club. Um, so Kevin's busy working on that. So today you can put your questions to myself and obviously um, we're here to welcome Nuno to the club so you can put your questions to him. How are we to take questions? Nuno, Johnny Phillips from Sky Sports. Good to meet you. Uh, why was it you decided to come to Wolves? Um, good morning everybody. Uh, I like challenge. I like challenge. I like new challenge and most important uh, I appreciate uh, persons, people. So as long as the moment I, I met people from Wolves, I was delighted. And new challenge for us. Um, we hope to, uh, to work hard and, and bring new things to, to the club, help the team to succeed. And the new challenge. New challenge is always a, a good thing for us. Did you speak to any of your countrymen before coming here? Your former manager, Jose Mourinho, did you seek advice? No, we just spoke normal things, but I was decided to come. And what is your knowledge of the championship and what it will take to get Wolves out of the championship? We have to, we have to know, we have to, to work hard to know. We know a lot of things already. The club gives us a lot of information. We, we, we as a, a coaching staff, we adapt and we see and we look for to, to try to get all the details that we can on a new competition that we know that is hard and it's really, really tough, but we are ready. So first thing now is to, to organize, to plan, to build the squad that we want. And from day one, work hard with the players, progress them, make them better for us to, to be a competitive team in a, in a tough competition. 
And is the target to get Wolves promoted at the first season? Now is the moment of, uh, of, of planning, not, not making targets. We'll go from day one. You cannot go and look to May when you are in, uh, in, um, in June. So day one, after that uh, first game, and you go on and on. This is the target. You've shown your work at some very big clubs. You've had proven success. What will you bring to Wolves? What qualities will you bring here? We'll bring, we'll bring the things that uh, it's our main characteristic. Commitment, first of all. Um, we try to cooperate to all the areas in the club. We'll try to, to make players better each day. Um, we are a, a coaching staff that um, really looks to the development of the players because we believe this is the way we develop the team. Um, so we can bring what we always do, hard work, organization, good planning, uh, strategy, things that we believe that can make Wolves a better team and a winning team. And in terms of the strategy of recruitment and the players coming in, will that all be the work of George Mendes? Will he make the signings for you to then work with? No, this is a, the task of the club, like Laurie said before. Uh, we started working yesterday. Kevin now is working very hard to try and deliver the plan. This is the task of the club. And you've signed a long-term contract here, but you'll obviously be aware that Wolves have had three managers in the last year. What makes you think you can stay here longer than some of your predecessors? Nothing changes in football, you know that. It's everything about results. So uh, the demanding is high, um, but we believe at the moment that we, we sign a contract with three, three years, um, the time, we believe that we have the trust and the confidence to deliver a good job. So, but always results. And the best way to achieve results is to work hard and, and be really and show, show everybody that you are here to work and to make Wolves a better team. This is the, the secret of football. And Laurie, can I just ask you one question? Sure. It was only uh, a month ago that uh, Jeff Shee was giving a ringing endorsement of Paul Lambert and saying mm -hmm. how impressed he was with all his qualities. And, he wanted him to stay. Obviously, something's changed there. What was it that changed? And you know, who's calling the shots? Is it George Mendes who's making decisions? Can you sort of explain what's going on in that front? Yeah, sure. I, I think there's a couple of points to address there. First of all, you're right. Jeff did an interview to the media um, at the beginning of April. Um, I think at that point, um, we were coming through a period of games where we'd gone six games with, uh, on a winning run of six games and the feeling was very strong. The feeling at that point was that we would kick on and, and finish the season really positively. And um, I think over the course of April, whilst we had some victories within that month, um, I think the level of consistency in our performance is probably, um, in reality, what caused the owners to, to start to take a differing view on, on where they feel the club and the team should be going. Um, I think if we're being honest and if we were to ask Jeff now, I think he'd still probably echo, echo some of those sentiments about Paul. Because I think there were, there were endorsements about him as a person and his characteristics and what he was bringing and, and, and the, kind of the, the coaching, uh, his style and his personality. So, and again, I can say nothing but sort of good things about Paul, we had a very good relationship with him as, as he did with other sort of members of the team. So, um, but if we're being honest, um, and then when you evaluate over the course of the last six, seven months, um, yeah, there's been highs, but there's been lows, and there's been a lack of consistency in performance, and, and, uh, and that's probably what's changed, or certainly that's what's um, amplified certain decisions over the last sort of month of the season, and, and as I say, there's an expectation that we would really push on and finish high up the league. We felt there was an opportunity to do that, and, and that didn't happen, unfortunately. Thanks. Laurie, Nick Feather, I believe, submitted today. Are you saying then that the results over the course of one month were enough to change their opinion about whether Paul Lambert should stay as manager? No, but I think over the course of... Uh, I think there were probably enough to um, give the owners the feeling that was the progression that they hoped for developing as fast as they wanted and, and if you then take the final month of the season and then put that in balance with the rest of the rest of the say the last six months and over the season then then I guess the, the, the last month of the season really sort of typified where we've been through the season and um, slightly living to regret I, I made a remark at the end of season dinner about a roller coaster season which we seem to have 
frequently. But and that, if, yeah, again, the last the last month of the season really typified that, and and that's kind of where we want to move away from, and we want more levels of consistency really in our performance. And as I say, I think the last month really sort of typified where we've been through the season, and and the level of consistency within those performances just wasn't strong enough. So clearly, something. At the start of April, when we'd sort of come off the back of a six-match winning run, and we'd played some pretty good, good football within that, you know, away at Fulham and Brentford, and you know, arguably some really strong results. But we then just didn't, we didn't continue to kick on that that performance level during the month of April, and that was that was a frustration, definitely. Can I ask you to address that issue of George Mendes and yeah. his influence at the club? Many people outside yeah. get the impression that he has a a very big influence over mm. the decisions that are made in terms of recruitment, yeah. in terms of managers and players. Is that true? I think there's, there's a couple of things to clear up. First of all, and I've seen I've seen headlines and, and news reports over the course of the week from various sort of um, channels and platforms. That George Mendes isn't in charge of the recruitment of this football club. He can't be. That that's point one. It's it's not it's not within the rules. So physically can't be. Um, however, is he? Is he a known associate to the owners? Yes, he is. He's a friend of theirs. He has been for some time, and that's there's, there's never been any secret about that. Um, that's that's a comment that, that Jeff's made on, on more than one occasion. Are we any different to any other football club in terms of how we operate our recruitment plan? No, we're probably not. We look at any number of sources. We have a very established recruitment team within the football club, which is headed by Kevin, and we will take players and look at players from any number of sources including George and, and, and his company, uh, Jester Food. So the bottom line is we want the best players to come into this football club and help take this team forward, no matter where they come from. If the man on the moon is good enough, we'll look at him and we'll, um, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll look to sign him. And if he's a player that's within the Jester Food portfolio, then we'll take him. If he's not, we'll look and take him from somewhere else. So in answer to his question, no, I don't believe he is. But is he someone that, because of the friendship that he has with the ownership, is he someone that we take opinions and advice from? Then yes. And does that stretch to managers as well? Well, clearly, he's, he, he represents Nuno, so he's, he's someone that's been involved in this process. But again, that's more by the fact that Jeff met Nuno two years ago, and that's as long as far and as far back as the relationship between the owners and Nuno goes. Was comfortable with Nuno's coaching philosophy, his style, what he thinks he can bring to bring to this club. So inevitably that was going to have an influence in the decision that we took with our coach. And last for me, Nuno um, says he doesn't feel that he wants to talk about targets at this stage, but in terms of what the club have said to Nuno, is it about performances or is it about promotion? Well, I think um, I think there's probably an element of both, but we have to get the performances right first of all. I think if we get the performance levels right and they're consistent, then I wouldn't go so far as to say promotion would take care of itself, but we'd certainly put ourselves in a better position. And from the club point of view, we can't we can't continue operating around mid table and around fifteenth in this league. From my, my opinion, this club is too big, the infrastructure is too big and the fan base is too big to accept that. So we will be expecting to push on and improve, definitely. But as Nuno says, we're at day one of this project in this season, and it will take some time. Nuno, can I ask um, you know, how much you're looking forward? You said it's tough the championship, you know that. How much are you looking forward to that challenge? I'm, looking, I'm, I'm enthusiastic with it. Um, I know that he's, he's going gonna to need a little of, of adaptation from us. <coughs> I think we can do it. Also, with uh, the help from the club, the, the analysis department, and um, this our work everywhere we went. We went to from Portugal to Spain to a big club. We have to adapt. We have to adjust our routines, and this is the way the, the coach works. Make um, adaptation. Try to find a better way, and all depends on the players. All depends on the players. Uh, now it's important to look at the players that we already have. Try to to know as much as possible of their characteristics and try to make them better and to compete in the championship. I believe that if the, the better that we play, we are more 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 close to, to have success. Thank you. And I just want to say anything from you, just I didn't ask. Um, uh, I am a client of, an, of the best agent in the world, so he, he does his job, I do my job. Larry does his job, and uh, being in Wolves for us, 
is a is a big challenge as a, as coaches. Um, we know that after the big clubs that we we've coached before with success, we had other options, very very nice options. But we are here to work and make Wolves a better team. So this is important. The people that are here physically, day by day in the club, this this is the people that are going to make Wolves a better a better club and a club that proudly gain again the success of 1560s. This is what we hope to do it. You know, Steve, come to my TV. Yeah. Um, you're obviously used to coaching clubs at the very, very top. What do you see being the different challenges trying to get Wolves to play at that kind of standard and, and head towards that direction? First of all, um, of course, uh, we, we coach big clubs in different leagues, in different competitions. Uh, the, the, the challenge that we were there were different. We're talking about uh, La Liga in Spain and in a big club in Portugal. But uh, as a club is in itself, Wolves is a big club. Um, yesterday we, we had the pleasure of being in the training ground and the facilities are there. Um, so we have all we need to develop a good work. First of all, we have to... Um, to the difference is going to be uh, the players, the players. I believe that the players that we have now, we have to improve them, we have to make them better. I believe that we can do it. After that, we have to build a strong squad, a squad that um, we believe is the best option for us. And after that is a, a day, a day by day routine. So nothing changes really in football. Um, of course, England is a different, a different atmosphere, a different style of play uh, in the championship. But we believe that our idea can succeed. So there's nothing, there's honest, no big difference in football as long as uh, you get the right recipe. And the right recipe is a day-by-day -day work commitment and um, try to build, a, beside the strong team, a really good group of persons that are ready to give everything for the, for the shirt. Do you think it's important to have British players in the mix because, because of their experience of the leagues here? We have to get good players, good players. As long as they perform as if they are young, British, English, uh, sorry, German, uh, Portuguese, no matter. We, we believe that uh, besides that, everything in football is global in our days. So we have to be to every, to every all option, uh, open to every option. Of course, we already have new players that um, can deliver this this experience in the competition that uh, that we are going to be involved, like Carl, like Edwards like Ben Marshall, all these players can, can help and most of all try to integrate as, as fast as possible the players that are coming. This is the, the, the big challenge also for them as, a, as a club players. Thank you Nuno. Laurie, um, Nuno will be the fourth man in charge here in 12 months, um, which you start to end up with reputation if you keep changing. Mm. Is that something you want to avoid? I mean, is, is this the man that you actually have to stick by through thick and thin? Yeah, clearly. I don't think any club would want to be making the changes as, as frequently as that. So yeah, I think stability is absolutely key. Um, do we want to be able to change that? No. And do we see Nuno as being a real stable part of the future of the club? Yes, we do. Absolutely. And, and what, what is it about Nuno in particular that you think are, are great qualities that, that you haven't seen elsewhere? Well, I think in terms of um, Nuno's pedigree from, and he's touched on it a moment ago, and, and from, from his former clubs where he's been, um, very successful player, um, but also in terms of operating at a very high level within Spain and within Portugal, um, and then how we feel that we want to blend that level of experience and that style of play into how we want to take this team forward, we saw as being a real key critical part of, of, of the characteristics of what we were looking for. Thank you. Hello. Hi, Gary James from HTV. Um, what has impressed you so far about the little time you've been here? You've obviously looked at the, the squad and maybe looked back at some of the matches. What's actually impressed you? First of all, the facilities that we have, you know, the training ground was, was really important. The stadium, all these infrastructures that the club has, I think this is the, what, what made me... I didn't know, uh, when I wasn't here before. And um, being here was, was really, really exciting for us. Um, of course, we start, now we start to work uh, and look at the, at the, at the players and the, and the squad and the team in, in different eyes. When we start uh, talking about the uh, possibility to come to Wolves, 
I, I was in, um, in competing. But no, uh, everybody, everybody has uh, their own routines. Of course, we have our plan. Uh, from day one, we're going to start um, doing and deliver uh, what we think is better. We don't, we don't split between fitness and football. We try to integrate everything in the training session, so um, the players must adapt to, to our idea. <coughs> and our idea is a hard training, intensive, intensive, intensity in the training sessions. Um, we, we build fitness at as, as the same time that we build uh, style of play. So we don't, we don't split things. It's all about all the training sessions at the ball, the players have to adapt as fast to our what we expect to deliver them. So it's not about splitting the 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 the, the, the preseason scheduling. We're gonna be two year, two weeks here in um, in Wolves. Then we go to Austria and we start uh, uh, the games. We're gonna have three three games split by two days. This is what we believe gonna give us the the right the right um, condition to then. Uh, come back and uh, and getting close to the competition because we know here we're gonna have a lot of games and uh, the resting part. So the, as as fast as the player adapt to this this idea of having two days, two games a week, is gonna be really really important. So we have all everything planned. Of course, we have to organize better. Um, and the most important thing that we have to consider is the player, is the player himself. Uh, of course, is they have to, to, to know our ideas, but uh, communication is very important for us. So we're going to help them, they're going to help us, and we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Okay. Okay. Okay, folks. Thank you. Excellent. Thank Thank you. Cameras want to go and take some pictures on the balcony. Luno, if everyone else wants to move out to the suite for the uh, breakaways, please. <laughs> <laughs>